So everybody is always asking for a McCree and a Hanzo guide, so I figured I'd start with the Hanzo guide. So for those who don't know me, I'm an Overwatch player, I'm a Hanzo main, and my season high this season is 3700. I've kind of built a reputation as being a Hanzo player, so if you see any Hanzo jokes across the comment section on my videos, it's because I'm a Hanzo main. I know I'm already going to get hit with the question from everyone saying, my teammates won't even let me play Hanzo, how do you play Hanzo without getting flamed? And it's a simple answer, because I do understand the stigma with Hanzo and how people react when he's picked. And being a Hanzo main myself, I've discovered the only way you get people to shut up and stop flaming about the Hanzo. And that is one thing. You have to prove yourself. Basically just get a lot of kills. <laughs> if you're a bad Hanzo, you have weak stats because you know people are going to check your career profile when you pick them. It happens to me every time. I'm lucky because I do have a positive win rate on Hanzo, so people don't care as much, but if you have a negative win rate on Hanzo, even if it's like 49 or 50% win rate, if they don't see your name in the kill feed like every 20 seconds, they're going to blame you. It's the nature of Hanzo, you just have to understand what you're getting yourself into. If you're not getting kills, they're not going to trust you. So that's all I have to say about that. To get people to stop flaming you, you need to be real with them and say, yo, I'm good at Hanzo, I'm going to get kills, watch this they're gonna shut up and let you do it. So now here are the tips, and here's the stuff that I'm doing every game when I play Hanzo. So I play Hanzo on almost every 2CP map on defense. So my favorite part about Hanzo, and why he's so incredibly good, no it's not scatter, no it's not one tap headshots, yes those are both amazing, but it's his sonic arrow guys. Sonic arrow lets you see through the walls, lets your team see through the walls, it's, it's honestly the strongest part of his kit, and I don't think most people realize that. So here's what happens, and you're going to see this throughout the game. The tip I have for Sonic Arrow is don't stop using it. It has like a 20 second cooldown, and the second that cooldown is over, you should launch it at another area on the map. An area where enemies would most likely be hiding, or getting ready to push, or just somewhere popular. Somewhere where there would typically be an enemy, and especially at choke points, it's really good because you can shoot almost anywhere and you can see the whole team. Shoot that Sonic Arrow constantly, be using it. I'm snapping my finger with the rhythm because it should always be up. Letting your team see through the walls and letting you yourself see through the walls means that you can line up easy headshots on people that are about to come across the wall. This leads to picks. If you're not sure where an enemy is at, you saw a McCree go this direction, but now he's somehow vanished and you don't know where he's at and you don't want to go there because you know he's crouched in the corner with a flashbang ready. Go ahead and just shoot the sonic arrow, get a tank over there, take him out. If there's one thing to take from this video, it's that you just need to always be using the sonic arrow. It's too important to just let it be sitting in your kit and not using it. Alright, next is that you need to start most engagements with the scatter arrow. Since the scatter arrow can completely void you from even having an engagement. I mean, you just peek, shoot your scatter, you get a free kill, you no longer have to peek. You got the kill. I start almost every fight by shooting a scatter because it deals so much damage across a whole team where it completely wipes out one person or it can wipe out one person, deal a lot of damage to some other people. Most people don't have a problem with this, so I'm not going to spend much time on the topic. Clearly, Scatter Arrow is kind of broken. You can just shoot it in a room and get free kills. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> in case you don't know, you typically want to shoot it right at someone's feet. or I mean, you want to shoot it like a foot ahead of their feet on the ground at an angle so that it hits the ground and angles back up, making like a V shape and kills them. And so one of the lovely parts about playing 2CP maps and being on defense and why I like playing defense Hanzo on 2CP is that I'm always on the high ground. Now you see the defenders always have high ground. If you pay attention to every 2CP map, what does the defense have that the offense doesn't? High ground. And Hanzo players love high ground. It's easier to hit headshots because when you look down, you see the head first. That means you're getting faster kills. Your scatter arrow, you never have to worry about hitting weird angles with scatter. Like if the terrain, like if the ground terrain is bumpy or whatever. You don't have to worry about that as much. You just look down, scatter, or look down, shoot, or it's sonic, whatever. You have the perfect spot for peeking. And it's amazing. I mean, we could talk about high ground all day. The fact that you can see the enemies whenever you want, and the enemies kind of have to guess where you're at because they can't see you. They see your head when you're peeking, but that's about it. Every single map has the high ground when you're playing on defense. Take advantage of it, be on it. Yes, and I'm even talking on Eichenwald, that little bridge on top, play there. I know a lot of you guys are like, whoa, that, Nate, that's a little close up. Really, you camped that entire game? Yes, I play that thing and I don't freaking leave. You've seen my gameplays as Hanzo on that map. I'm always there and I don't leave. 
All right, and then you also got to know who you can and cannot kill. And I'm not just saying like, oh, I can't kill Farah because she counters me. I can't kill Genji because he counters me. I can't kill Winston because he jumps on me and counters me. I can't kill D.Va because she has Defense Matrix and just gets up in my face. They counter me. I'm not saying like that. And also, I'm going to completely debunk everything I just said. You start to learn who you are good at landing shots on and who you are bad at landing shots on. So you know who to engage and who to run away from. This is very much a fight or flight situation. When Farah boosts up into the air and she starts spamming rockets on you, do you start running away and get back to your healers if they're not near? Or do you go ahead, stand your ground, play the peeky peeky game with her and try to take her out? For me, I play the peeky peeky game. I try to better position myself against Farah, but I try to take her out. Because I can. And I played enough Hanzo, to now I'm at the point of where I've been able to consistently kill Farah. It's going to take a while to build to that, so probably don't start with that off the bat. Run back to your healers. And you'll probably just want to switch to Soldier or McCree in the first place. When you're actually getting kills with Hanzo, and when you're a good Hanzo, you're going to start seeing people swap to Genji and Farah and Winston and D.Va. Only one hero out of everyone I just listed can be an actual problem. And for me, that's Genji. Now, I've gotten pretty good at being able to kill Genji, but a really good Genji knows that they just need to keep jumping around and stay on top of your head and just keep spamming that, those right clicks and melees. Genji is really the only problem I occasionally have. And a lot of you are wondering, okay, well what about Winston when he jumps on you or D.Va when she just holds down Defense Matrix and flies at your face? Yeah, guys, you can win those fights. I laugh hilariously when a D.Va sees me over on high ground somewhere and she just charges in at me. I'm always going to win the fight. I hope you guys know that. Hanzo beats D.Va. Every time. Usually you see me laughing and talking about this whenever I play Hanzo on my stream, which, by the way, if you're watching this video right now, the night it uploads, I am streaming right now, so you should go check that out. I have the link down below. But it's hilarious how D.Va players think that they can kill Hanzo. Unless Hanzo's missing his shots, Hanzo always wins the fight. D.Va's getting right up in your face, you just land like two or three headshots on the mech in a row, she's out, and then you just hit her like once with an arrow as a baby diva and it's the kill and you can easily time that last shot because she's shooting up in the air and slowly falling down it's an easily timed shot and you'll get used to killing it don't run away when diva chases you kill her the same goes for winston except with winston it's a little bit different so when winston jumps on you you know to expect the bubble he'll put the bubble down and he'll win the fight the second you try to engage him around the bubble he's gonna win when you see winston jumping towards you Get in a spot where he has to leave the bubble to deal damage. And if you land your shots, you're going to kill him. Especially if you hit him when he's jumping towards you in midair and you land one shot at him, you're going to win the fight like 70% of the time. Just get out of the range of his bubble or he's going to deal a lot of damage while you can't hit him. At the end of the day, if you're hitting your shots and you're getting kills, you're going to be a pretty good Hanzo. Uh, and I guess one last thing I could say is don't care too much about your accuracy. Even the pro players have low accuracy for Hanzo. And honestly, for me, and this is more of a my playstyle type of thing, I spam arrows all the time. I mean, think about it. If you're shooting a sonic arrow at a wall just to see where enemies are, your accuracy is going to go down. So people that flame Hanzos for accuracy, you're probably not a great player, or you may not just be thinking it through. Hanzos spam a lot, and they shoot walls just because they want to see through it. So don't ever flame Hanzo for his accuracy. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. There are people out there that want to be Hanzo mains. I know a lot of you are saying, don't encourage him, Nate. Don't encourage him, Nate. But guys, come on. He's one of my favorite heroes. And I've the only reason I've been able to win my games with Hanzo is because the people were able to let me play him in my competitive games. And we all have to start somewhere. That's a very true statement. We all got to start somewhere. And make sure you're serious about playing Hanzo. If you need to switch, dude, please switch. Don't give us a bad name. We already have a bad rep as it is. I'm trying to build up the reputation of all Hanzo mains around. Go ahead and switch if you're not doing well. Because you'll see me switch when I'm not doing well, man. So I want to address the streaming situation. For you guys that have been following my channel for like the past two weeks, you're probably sick of hearing about the Twitch stuff. And I completely understand. I don't want to keep cramming it down your throat. I, I, I really don't. But right now I have a goal and that goal is to be partnered with Twitch and I think that can happen here in like two weeks. I'm going to apply for the partnership program, but I think I, I just need some more followers and I just need to get a few more streams under my belt. We've been getting a lot of viewers. We get like anywhere from 60 to 200 and it, it's really cool. And I'd really appreciate it if you went over and checked the stream because I've been streaming the nights I upload. I have my streaming schedule fit to the YouTube upload schedule. So the night this goes up, man, Sunday night, I'm going to be live until like 10 o'clock Eastern time. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. You know I definitely enjoyed it because I love talking about Hanzo, my, one of my favorite heroes. 
and I wish you all the best of luck in your matches. Again, man, we're coming super close to 40,000 subscribers. Man, that's that's a number. I mean, I can't even I can I can still hardly comprehend I passed 20,000 a couple weeks ago and here we are almost at 40. Guys, seriously, thank you so much for the support. And again, thank you for letting me have a platform to spread the words of positivity and letting me have a voice to help other people in the community out because I, I just want to help people get better at the game. I want to help people understand what they have to do to win these games and what can better their chances at winning. And just, I don't know, it also gives you how I play the game. Because, you know, the stuff I say in my videos, I hope you guys don't think I'm just saying that this is automatically right. I'm just saying what worked for me. I, I don't want people thinking what I'm saying is the universal truth. What I say is always right because I'm the perfect Overwatch. No, guys, if I was the perfect Overwatch player, I wouldn't be playing in Master. I'd be on a top 500 account. Like, this is just what works for me. And it's my little spot here in the community. And I want to thank you all for letting me have it because it's been a lot of fun. And it, this has really taken over my life. This YouTube channel has completely taken over my life. And I absolutely love it. Again, thank you all for watching. I'm sorry if this video was a little long. Remember to check out the stream if you're bored because it's honestly a lot of fun. We get to hang out. You can ask me anything. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the night. Take care, everybody. See ya.